Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Life is full of ups and downs. And this last three weeks I've been on more of a down. And when I went to my class on Monday, I was in such a bad place. I felt really emotional because I was feeling bad about how I'm showing up for my life. And so I felt really emotional around my kids and around everybody. And when I went to class, I remembered Angel sat up there and she talked about the importance of breathing and how when we breathe, um, it opens us up to being more aligned with ourselves and for us to feel, feel our soul. And I remember instantly I had this thought, but I don't want to connect. Then I was thinking, oh wow, this is interesting because I know that what she's speaking is truth. But I was consciously saying that I don't want to feel that. And then I was remembering that everything that we go through is to teach us something. Whether it is something painful or something amazing or something that's a struggle that we go through, it is all here to teach us something to help us have more knowledge and more compassion and more love for ourselves first and then for other people who are also experiencing that. And then all of a sudden I was thinking about, wow, as I'm listening to all these ladies share their experiences, now I understand what it feels like to know what it feels like to be connected. And then also on the other side, know when I'm purposely trying not to feel. And that was really interesting to me because there are a lot of people who don't want to feel what they're feeling. And that's why we overeat. That's why we overconsume social media or watch movies or put our lives, you know, be codependent or try to people please or try to fix other people or try to gossip. Like there are so many things that we can do to ignore ourselves, our souls and our lives. And in that moment, I was shown that there is a block and what it feels like to reject your own soul. So today I was on Facebook and I came across a video that my mentor Angel shared on her Facebook page. And as I was listening, she was talking about learning how we can get truth for ourselves. I just had this thought that I should ask her if I could share that video on my podcast because she has such a good way of teaching and sharing her journey and she has changed so many people's lives. First of all, this is a video she's doing while she's driving so the, the audio isn't 100% amazing, but I wanted to play it for you because I think the message that she is sharing is life changing. She's changed my life. So I wanna go ahead and play that for you now. I am going to share with you something that I realize I share with clients and groups every day, but why am I not sharing it with my friends online? A process I call tuning your instrument to truth. So it's only been in the last few years that I discovered these concepts and I would like to put them into the best expression that I know of with words to describe a spiritual process that has helped me to learn how to communicate with God easily because I have a mind, body, heart, and spirit. Those four elements are like strings on an instrument. So if you have any musical experience and have ever tuned a guitar or a violin or even been in a choir where you are singing on key, the the conductor's trying to help you get on pitch or you're harmonizing anything to do with music then you have some exposure to music sounds and notes are frequencies and I know from tuning the guitar that when the strings of my guitar are flat or sharp and I turn the peg as I'm plucking the string to try to get it to align with the note that I'm tuning it to that I can hear the wavelength I can hear the sound shifting as I turn that peg tighter and it's going from flat and moving up to being on pitch when the frequency matches that of the sound you're tuning to it sounds like one it becomes one sound 
and then you know that you are now on key you're on pitch in music there's a term called dissonance and dissonance is that clashing sound that you get when you play two keys on a piano that are right next to each other if you play them at the same time it doesn't sound pretty and it kind of gives me like that cringe feeling something in my body actually tightens up in beautiful musical pieces sometimes dissonance is used on purpose to create a, a, a certain emotions and feelings but I know when I'm listening that I'm just thinking I can't wait till this resolves you know hopefully this is gonna resolve soon and you come back into the melody and or the harmony well what does this have to do with you your mind body heart and spirit all have frequencies in my experience that our minds are often operating on the frequency of fear and when fear is overtaking your mind meaning running your thoughts then as your spirit speaks to you messages of truth and light and love you experience an internal dissonance I notice this in people when they use the words I'm stuck I'm struggling I feel trapped those words clue me in to looking at where in their life they're uh, rejecting the message from their spirit a message of truth because their head is telling them to be afraid that they can't do it they shouldn't do it that's not the way to do it some sort of a message with fear and so that wrestle that they talk about or feeling stuck or trapped to me is just evidence that you have two conflicting messages or in other words you're out of tune you're not on the same frequency the body is a vessel of truth it is an amazing part of your instrument when fear is present and fear breeds anger and lies and guilt and shame your physical body will restrict and tighten up it gets tense think about where you feel it in your body when you're nervous or worried angry where do you feel it think about polygraph tests the lie detector tests that use physiology to reveal lying these things like came together through the spirit to help show me I didn't just come to earth to get a body I was given a body as part of my internal GPS system that when the antithesis of truth is present which is fear when the antithesis of love is present which is fear when the antithesis of light is present which is darkness when it is present my physical body is going off like a warning system tensing and tightening up and when it expands it relaxes and releases that's when light and love and truth are present so if I am listening or monitoring my body's reactions to anything a thought that I have a situation that I'm in something somebody's saying to me information I'm reading songs I'm listening to if I listen to my body I can observe the flow the restriction and the expansion and it's one of the strings of my instrument so if I want to be in tune with light, truth, and love, then I want to seek to expose myself, think, be around, say, do, move in a way that creates that release instead of staying in restriction. When I'm in restriction or there's tension in my body, I know that there's somewhere that I'm lying to myself, that I've attached to uh, a fear-based thought. So your body, that's one of your strings. Your heart, is another string your emotions most of us avoid escape numb and distract from emotion because we've been taught to do that we're emotionally constipated society but if you realize emotions are not good bad right or wrong they just are they're like weather like rain and wind and snow and Sun it just is and it all serves a purpose and it's all natural it's natural it's supposed to be part of the ecosystem we were naturally designed to have emotions so if we just observe them what am I feeling I think I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed embarrassment is shame and it's gonna breed that restriction if you're in shame or guilt or fear then there's somewhere in your thought process and in your way of being that is not aligned with truth so you can feel that in your feelings and the more awareness that the more you sit with your emotions and just ask what am I feeling and name it and then what am I telling myself that will lead you to know what your thoughts are and as soon as you can hear or observe what am I telling myself right now then you ask yourself are these thoughts coming from a place of love or fear you're tuning your instrument 
When your thoughts are attached to fear, they're lies. They are lies. So you turn to God and you ask what is true. Um, I'm giving you the brief Reader's Digest version today just because it's on my heart and I just shared it with a client and watched it make so much sense to her that I, I just felt like I need to share this publicly. Let me just give this away. Let me just gift this to anybody who's willing to pay attention and try it on for themselves. That you have a mind that you can watch. Are my thoughts coming from a place of fear or love? If you see that they're in fear and you don't know what to do about it, ask this question. God, if I were to operate from love right now, what would I think, feel, and do next? Just ask. Revelation will come. You'll be shown and taught things that maybe no one in your life ever modeled. You might have only been raised with guilt and judgment and fear and shame as a motivator to get you to do the right things. And so you don't even know how to be any different. It's so amazing to just ask the question. When you ask a question, you call upon revelation. It will be answered. So the more you play with this instrument and you tune your strings, your mind, body, heart, and spirit, seeking to align them all with truth, the frequency of truth, you'll get better and better at it. The same that happens when you're learning music. If you're learning to sing or play an instrument, you get better and better. I know when I first started guitar lessons back in college, and people would say, tune your guitar. I couldn't do it. I'd have to ask the teacher for help. And then I finally went out and I bought a little device that digitally or electronically would help me tune. It would tell me your strings now on pitch. And so I just thought I was broken and I, I had missed out on the musical abilities that so easily fell upon my mother. But over time, the more I practiced that tuning that guitar, then my ear could recognize what was going on. And my ear could recognize, oh, that is on pitch. The same process has happened with me spiritually. The more I have practiced recognizing my mind, what's going on in there, just observing my thoughts. Am I thinking from a place of fear or love right now? Are these thoughts coming from fear or love? It's just that simple of a question. That awareness then helps me if my thoughts are based on fear, I cannot be in the presence of God. And fear and love can't coexist. So if I'm in fear and I'm trying to pray to God for answers, sorry, not connecting. It's not the same language. So I clear that. I shift. I bring myself back into an energetic state of love. Then I ask God a question. And then the download happens just like that. The answer. There's no waiting time. There's no lag time. There's no gap. There's no take a number and wait in line. There's no I'll get back to you. Leave a message after the beep. There's an immediate answer. And when a truthful thought drops in, it resonates just like um, me a melody in music that is on key. And my body is the second one. Fear makes it restrict. Love and truth and light makes it expand. Just check in. What is my body doing? Then your heart. What am I feeling? Are these emotions coming from fear or love? Anger is a mask for fear. Rage is a mask for shame, which also comes from fear. Peace comes from love. Um, joy comes from love so again you're using that inner compass or dial of fear and love as a calibration system to to judge or monitor or observe your thoughts and then lastly my favorite part of my instrument is my soul my spirit the true self angel <laughs> i'm constantly getting to know her that's who i was before i came into this earth and began to be programmed and conditioned by societal views family views, community views that put all this programming and conditioning on me. A lot of times with good intentions, they just wanted me to do the right thing and be the best person I could be. But a lot of times that led me away from knowing how to listen to my spirit, my soul. You call it, Some people call it your intuition or your conscience. It's so amazing to come back because my soul, and I believe your soul, is always on pitch. He or she has perfect pitch. So learning to take questions in and say, hey soul, this is what I've been telling myself. Is it true or is it my story? And to be able to hear my soul say, that's your story, meaning that comes from programming and conditioning. And then I just ask what is true and what more is there? And these are some of the steps that I use to tune my instrument. If I can ever help you with more, just leave a question. If you wanna know more or wanna practice it with me, let's do it. There is nothing that I love more than being with people and making music, whether it's spiritually or vocally. I wanna make music. Let's harmonize, let's tune our spirits to the frequency of light, love, and truth. Have a great day. 
as you can tell, my mentor Angel is so incredible at explaining and sharing her truth and helping us be able to connect with ourselves and our souls and helping us find our own superpower to be able to learn truth and use our bodies to be able to find the truth and find the ways that we're lying to ourselves. And so I'm so grateful for that. I was talking to Angel on Monday about how down I've been feeling. And she mentioned to me that I am coaching myself. So this podcast is documenting my self-coaching and the way that I am helping myself get through the ups and the downs of life. I was grateful for her to share that with me because it helped me see that I need to let go of the expectations that I feel like everyone has for me and just continue to have an experience on here that's truthful. And then whatever comes of my experience, I know that God will bring me the opportunities that I need to be able to help people when the time is right. I just want to say how grateful I am. I may be sharing a lot more clips of Angel's inspirational shares because it is absolutely life-changing work. She has a gift and I believe that she was called to go through all these things so she could teach us and bring us along. And I still have a lot to learn. I still have layers of things that, that I need to get over. One of them is the opinions other people have of me. I think one thing that I am still holding on to is making sure that I'm on a certain path so that my parents will be happy and proud of me. And I was thinking today, what if honoring your own heart and your own truth is the responsible path? What if it's not about money? What if it's not about anything else, but just honoring and following your heart is the responsible path? Or honoring the fact that you can love yourself through all the moments that you have. If you are, like with me, I was ignoring myself on purpose and I knew that I was consciously doing it and learning to love myself through all of that. And I know I talk about that a lot, but it is hard to do sometimes, especially when you're in your own head. So I'm grateful for these down times because it, it shows me that all of us have times in our life that we are down and that we suffer. And a lot of times when we suffer, it's because of our thoughts and because of the expectations we have put on ourselves, and it has nothing to do with other people. And so I'm feeling really good and hopeful today. I hope you all are too. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you.